Civilization VI, a game about creating a thriving society, researching exciting technologies, and partaking in careful diplomacy. But today, it's about swarming our enemies with millions of ants, because we will be playing as the Insect Empire, with the goal of conquering three of humanity's greatest leaders, using nothing more than the humble ant. Can we drown our enemies in a flood of insect violence, or will they research automatic rifles and start massacring us? There's only one way to find out. But first, a word from our sponsor. Recently, I found this game. It's pretty underground, so you might not have heard of it, but it features hundreds of unique champions, compelling resource management, and the graphics? Well, they're so good that sometimes I sit alone in a dark room, staring at my tablet on max brightness until my retinas explode. But that's okay, because Raid Shadow Legends and Monster Hunter are doing a crossover. Between January 9th and March 5th, you can collect five Monster Hunter-themed champions based on iconic monsters such as Rathalos, Zinogre, and more. Everyone can get the Rathalos Blademaster for free by logging into Raid for seven days between now and February 27th. But if that's not enough, you can always try unlocking my favorite champion, Nyshak Verminlord. I like him because much like a bowling ball covered in lipstick, he is rotund and seductive. Hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, where was I? Oh yes, and there's also Sir Nicholas. I enjoy him because he has an ability that makes him literally invincible. Some people will call this unfair, but I call it a compelling gameplay decision. We've also got some new updates to the game, such as the Cursed City. It's one of Raid's biggest features since the Tower of Doom, and it allows you to battle through hundreds of stages and even fight two bosses at the same time. Simply amazing. I tell you what, it's actually free, so just download Raid today and explore it for yourself. You can use my link below or the QR code to receive all these free bonuses as well as epic champion Drake. Once that's done, use code RAIDXMAS for free stuff. And I think it would be hilarious if you join my clan. That's my name, that's the clan. Fantastic. Now back to the video. Okay, here we are in the uh, lovely Pangea with our ant civilization. Now, unfortunately, you know, there are still some humans. We're, we're working out the kinks in that, um, but we do have an ant leader. It's Some people might say that this is just a PNG and a poorly cropped one at that, but those people don't know what they're talking about because we are the queen ant and we have 50% production towards recon units, which are... Ants are classified as recon units, and actually we're only going to be using ants, so we can ignore the rest of that. Ants are very good at the start, but as the world progresses and develops new technologies, we will still be ants. So our enemies will, you know, discover M16 automatic rifles, we are still ants. Our enemies will discover intercontinental ballistic missiles, ants. We've made history on the second turn. Who but Formicidae could create the ant, and who can possibly resist it? So that's that's really good. We, we got lucky, we uh, took out this barbarian camp here, and it gave us a free ant. As you can see here, this ant looks suspiciously like a human and a dog. That's because 3D modeling is hard and expensive. I tried to pay someone to put an ant model in the game, but no one would do it. So instead, I'm going to say, um, may maybe editor, maybe you can, you know, work some magic here for me. Maybe turn this into an ant. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, let's move on. We're going to want to be fanning out in every direction to find people as quickly as possible so that we can kill them as quickly as possible. And having this ant is going to facilitate that. You can tell he's an ant because he has a little tiny ant icon. Now, that's the extent of the role-playing we're going to have to be doing. Now, in addition to civilized nations, we will also be encountering these barbarians, these, these shit-eating savages. I, I can't make fun of them too much because my, my sieve is going to be stuck in the medieval... Jeez, what would it even be? The prehistoric age? We're not going to be using a lot of technology either, so I can't make fun of the barbarians too much. Okay, so we found our first city-state, Samarkand. I've never heard of this place in my life. It seems to be inhabited by burly, muscular, black men in skirts. Interesting. Now, you see, we're finding a lot of barbarian camps, and there's a temptation to ignore these, because you look at them and you think, oh, they're just a bunch of mongrels, a bunch of filthy, inbred peasants. They're not going to amount to anything. But if you leave them long enough, they'll, they'll get this idea that they're actually people, and they'll start believing it, and they'll start advancing their little barbarian... Um, civilization and they'll make catapults and they'll be a real pain in the ass so you generally want to kill them you don't want them to develop those delusions of grandeur you see the thing with ants is 
they're right now they're just roughly as strong as a warrior so you know we're gonna get scaled out of of relevance very quickly here so we really just need to swarm our enemies with as many ants as possible and overwhelm them in fact i really i do feel pity for whoever has to fight this strategy because it's just it's just cheese it's just like starcraft zerg rush filth now these, these barbarian camps, when they're left undefended, that's just a nice little treat. Sometimes you'll find good things in there. I found an ant in there earlier, and uh, sometimes they have, you know, advanced technology, paradoxically. Okay, so my ant civilization has just developed laws, interestingly enough, and now we can change our policies in accordance with that. So, economic policy, urban planning for more production. And I'm going to go with survey for double experience on recon units. Well, ants are recon units this is going to be helpful okay now you see see what we're looking at here this is somebody's border i'm not sure who it is but we're going to start redirecting our ants in this direction and i'm also going to start just mass producing ants right now i can get out an ant every two turns with the right buildings we could probably squeeze that down to one ant every single turn um and then at that point we start making more cities and if we can just be pumping out like five ants per turn that would be i think that's where we need to be to win this a yeah, natural disaster occurring. Don't care. Amazing! We've met Wilhelmina, the Queen of the Netherlands. And it is my great pleasure to finally meet you. Fabulous. Oh, this is dreadful. There's a lot of, a lot of forests uh, between us and her. But we'll start, you know, pouring our units down in this direction. Massing on her border. She'll freak out. We'll tell her it's nothing to worry about. And then we'll kill her. That's the plan. This ant has, he's earned a promotion for himself, I guess, just by exploring. And so we can go to this menu here, give him faster movement on hill terrain. That's kind of helpful. But what's really exciting is if we can get all the way down to ambush, that gives him 20 combat strength, which puts him almost at the same level in terms of combat strength. It puts him at about the same combat strength as a fucking field cannon. Okay, so that's pretty exciting. If we could get an ant that is uh, effectively a field cannon, that would improve our chances here. Netherlands sends you gifts of greeting, wooden shoes, cheeses, and some delightful stroop waffles. Okay, you know what? I'm going to be honest. If it wasn't for the, the cheese and uh, apparently delightful stroop waffles, I would be inclined to think that this was some kind of a threat. Because wooden shoes, I can't imagine those are very comfortable. It would be as if I sent you... A package in the mail and it was a vice grip shaped perfectly to the size of your penis like your impression of that would not be that i was trying to be your friend or it shouldn't be editor can you pull up what is a stroop waffle i need to know oh yeah yeah that looks tasty now i know you might be thinking uh oh reggie you're cheating you're using these warriors you said you were going to only use ants well it's okay because i said so and i made the challenge I didn't build these warriors, they were just given to me, so I'm going to use them until they die. And furthermore, warriors, combat strength 20, ants, combat strength 25. Really, I'm making it harder on myself. The game is practically begging me to build a settler, but what it doesn't realize is that I don't need to make my own cities if my plan is to just steal everyone else's. So, I'm just going to keep making ants. In fact, right now I have one, two, three, four units of ants and i mean that doesn't seem very impressive because they are after all ants however i'm just just for for flavor i'm going to do a multiplier like one unit of ants let's say that's a hundred so now we have 400 ants that's impressive 400 ants could really ruin your day in, in just about any situation i am fond of pigs okay so we've just researched animal husbandry which allows us to milk cows which is nice. You gotta imagine, you know, the scientists were a little different back in those days. They're all just sitting around a table. They were like, what if we tried drinking it? You know, just spitballing ideas. But it worked. Now we'll, we'll lean into astrology because I think that there's some, there's some area, there's some potential for having a really silly ant-based religion. And I, I like the idea of it. Hail stranger, I am the appear to cease Trojan of the far reaching Rome. Uh, who are you and what lands can you claim as your own? Oh, you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, I'd like to find out where your capital is. Okay, Rome is pretty far away. Now, the unfortunate thing about this playstyle is it's necessary for me to rush people down. And why is that unfortunate? Because there's a mechanic in Civ 6 where it's, it's basically like a United Nations. So, like, all of the major powers get together and they, they sit around a table and they discuss world policy and political matters. And, I, and, you know, I'd really enjoy seeing, like, these world leaders, Caesar, Bismarck, 
and then they're all sitting in a chair and then right next to them is just a gigantic ant or maybe even a normal sized ant. They're like listening to me. I've sent a trade delegation to you. Enjoy the Pecorino uh, Romano, the finest salted sheep's milk cheese you will ever have. Okay, that just, that almost sounds more threatening than the wooden shoes, but I'll take it. <laughs> he's like, excellent. In reality, he's just given me like congealed cum. And he's like, oh my god, I can't believe they I can't believe they took it. These guys are idiots. So far, we are doing a great job at avoiding combat with the barbarians. But as you can see here, the ants, they hold their own. They're pretty formidable in, in melee combat. Oh my god, we're doing massive work here. Oh my god, this guy's a maniac. This ant is insane! Okay, we've we've run into some minor issues with barbarians. They roughed up one of my ants, but we still have one, two, three ants descending on Amsterdam um, with this fourth ant just kind of exploring, waiting for them to arrive. We're going to now research bronze working, which allows us to produce the ant hill. Also, <laughs> I kind of like this. For each technology, there's something you can do to expedite its uh, development. So for this, uh, for archery, I kill a unit with a slinger. For bronze working, I kill three barbarians. And I kind of like the idea that somewhere along the way, when I'm crushing these barbarian skulls beneath my foot, I have like an epiphany. I'm like, oh, that's how bronze works, you know? Go ahead and make a holy district there. That'll help us start a religion. So right now, the city of Amsterdam looks, you know, it's largely undeveloped. It's just a couple of fields with some funny, funny Dutch men. <sighs> he has three military units. I'm like just a little concerned about it, but I think I'll be able to be okay. Do you think us unaware of your plans? We demand you move your troops from our borders at once. This is the part where we, uh, we don't tell the truth. You know, like a lie. My troops are merely passing by. She says thank you. You know, she's a very, she's a very, like, charming little woman. She feels like someone you would find on the bus, or maybe like she's friends with your mother. And it makes me feel a little bad because then I realize that I'm going to tear her apart with razor sharp mandibles. And um, that's, that's too bad, you know. One day you're a Dutch woman and the next day you're being killed by hundreds of ants. Dollar Store Julius Caesar is now making fun of us for not expanding. He thinks he's top shit because he's the leader of Rome, but it's like, man, you, you're only here because they already used Julius Caesar for the past, like, four games. You're, you know, getting a little cocky, I, I think. All right, I think we can go. I think we can mobilize on Amsterdam here. Okay, Wilhelmnia. It's... <laughs> her agenda is that she wants to become a billionaire. And then we look at her city. Yeah, she's got some... She's got a long way to come. Um, but you know what? You don't even have to worry about that because I'm going to declare a surprise war on you. She's not happy. The Netherlands resists. Yeah, the Netherlands can resist, but that doesn't imply that they're going to survive. That that just like implies that they're going to kick and scream as I uh, rip them limb from limb, you know? Now, he, he is in luck because he has some slingers positioned in Amsterdam, so they'll be blasting me in the side of the head with some rocks for the next couple of turns, but... Um, we should be okay. There's also some barbarians that are retarding his ability to defend himself. Yes, you can use retarding in that way. Okay, we have our own settlers. I want like a relatively safe settlement, something uh, maybe over by this river here. Yeah, yeah, this river with all the flooding. Yeah, I think that'll be safe. We'll go over there. It makes me happy that you leave the world. <laughs> Jesus, this guy's a dick. He's just making fun of me for not building wonders. This would be relatively terrifying if you think about it. I mean, just imagine you're living in a little, you're living in your little uh, mud huts or whatever, and kind of you're in the jungle. And it's bad enough that you're already Dutch, but then week after week, giant insects coming out of the, the jungles and besieging your city. You have to fight them off every day just to get to the fucking corner store. It's like, yeah, it's a hard life. That's all I'm getting at. A plunder his trade route for 70 gold. Poor man. And as you can see here, we can attack Amsterdam with the ants, and it's it's a pretty good matchup for us right now. In the future, it, it becomes a lot less favorable, so. I'm gonna keep pounding away at Amsterdam. I, yeah, jeez. I really wish I had some more ants for this, but I, I think we can get them next turn. Going to build a shrine. This will start generating us some great profit points so we can make our own religion. Let's try to take Amsterdam with this guy. Amazing. 
With God's help, I may Netherlands uh, one day reclaim its territory. There's not a chance. You've all just been killed by ants. The Netherlands will not stand the test of time. You lasted like 1500 years before getting killed by ants, but at the end of the day, you, you've still been killed by ants. Which raises the question, do we want to keep the city of Amsterdam? Of course we do, but we have to make one massive change because it is no longer the city of Amsterdam. It is the city of ants -ter -dam. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and found this new city here. It's called Krimetogasta. That's just pretentious. Simplify it. Antopolis. Easy. I'm going to be adopting a, a kind of a wide play style here, trying to capture and found a lot of cities just because ants will be cheap and I need to make a lot of them. So the more ant factories I can have, the better. Ooh, should I... Would it be a big mistake to build a city that is not only right next to a river that could flood, but also next to a super volcano? Seems like a mistake. It seems like a mistake I would make, but I'm not going to do it this time. Okay, we've made a new city. This is, uh a stupid name. You are going to be Antopia. There's a point where once our enemies start uh, walling in their settlements, they become almost impossible for us to kill. So we're really racing against the clock there. We're also racing against, you see this, amenities, minus one amenities. Since I am focused almost exclusively on producing ants, I'm really not doing a good job developing my cities and they start getting upset about that because it's like, I have all of this research completed, I have penicillin unlocked, but instead of making penicillin and saving people's lives, I'm making ants. And that makes the citizens very upset and sometimes they will stage a revolution and it's a real pain in the ass. So I have to, I have to keep an eye on this. I have to make sure we don't have too many upstarts. Amsterdam is uh, beset by the barbarian menace. Uh, we're doing a pretty good job at beating them back. And very nice. We can make ants in three turns here. And we're going to send another envoy to Mitla, which confirms them as our ally. Yes, the rulers of Mitla bow to Formicidae, who become their first Suzerian in the world. It's kind of like domesticating uh, humans. We've basically domesticated them. Now, it's th that, that power dynamic is a little weird because, of course, we are ants, but uh, it's working. Okay, so let's do a little overview here. It's 2300 BC. Ants are probably the most powerful faction in the game, but it's a little hard to tell. I don't know the extent of Caesar's empire. We have one, two, three, four, four cities, and we're moving through various channels and forests and jungles where we're mobilizing about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have about 800 ants slowly barreling down on Rome. It'll probably take us about 20 turns to get there and kill them. I believe they get Roman legionnaires at some point and those are, they're troublesome. They're very good units and they're certainly able to kill ants. In fact, pretty much anything beyond maybe a spearman and we are a shit out of luck so that's that's the timer we have to beat oh i am kim jong-un the supreme leader of the democratic people's republic of korea you should be honored to meet me <laughs> it's a tremendous honor in fact i think that the civilization of north korea and a literal colony of ants you know we, we probably have a lot in common we could maybe be friends under different circumstances where are you at oh great Okay, so just uh, southwest of Rome is Pyongyang. Hopefully we can kill them before they develop their intercontinental ballistic missile technology. Uh, yeah, right there. <laughs> their agenda, Rocket Man, has an unhealthy interest in rockets and their nuclear payloads. Grudgingly respects other civilizations that project strength with nuclear weapons. Okay, that's not going to be us. So we got to gotta take this guy out fast. Speaking of rockets, you know, I'd, I'd love to just beat this challenge in a general sense, but I think the best way to do it would be a sign scientific victory because that involves me building a space shuttle and um, landing on the moon and I think I even have to establish a Martian colony and I would just I'd really love to rewrite human history in that way and do it all with ants. Okay so I think that the easiest way for us to get to Rome is going to be through the south here. There's it's a lot of open space that we can use and we can even use this road from Candy to get there quicker. The north is just it's a lot of mountain ranges and jungles and you just don't want to be a part of that. So we're just going to start funneling things down from Formicidae through Amsterdam and directly into Rome. We'll take out Rome and then it's it's on to uh, Rocket Man. He'll be the next target.
I'm building a government plaza in Formicidae, which is great because I'm pretty sure it gives me access to some unethical means to increase loyalty among my citizens. Speaking of which, if we keep up at this pace, we might be able to become an autocracy, or possibly we could develop a fascist government. That would be good. But for now, we are just ants. Okay, so I'm becoming a little concerned. The North Koreans are taking a very militarist, who would have thought, a very militaristic playstyle. They've got a lot of warriors on the go. Well, I'll just have to have more ants than they have warriors. It's just that simple. Okay, so Antopolis has been besieged by barbarians with a striking hatred for rice. And uh, fortunately, we were getting some help from our allies at Caguana. Meanwhile, I've located a road between Candy and Rome, and I'm just going to start pillaging it because I don't respect them. And he was talking mad shit, so, you know, fuck around and find out, my little Roman friend. So the Cardinal has been doing a great job in our uh, capital city. Uh, he's been increasing everyone's faith in our religion without a name. He's really out there doing some good advertising, and now I can upgrade him to have the Citadel of God trait. So every time I build something, I get a little kickback in faith. If we get enough faith, we get a religion, and we get a religion, we can, I don't know, start abusing our friends with it. That's how I always used to play. When I would play this multiplayer, I would just make a really ridiculously gay religion, and then I would forcibly convert my friends to follow that religion. They didn't like it. Seb, I don't know if you can hear this, but there's a kid getting absolute, getting the shit kicked out of him. Listen. Can you hear that? That kid is getting beat over there. Also, I'd like to point out just how aggressively the repair animation is in this game. That's frightening. That's right. That's kind of scary. I don't like that. All right, next turn, we march on Rome. Oh, rumor has it that North Korea just declared war on Rome. Oh, this is hilarious. I'll declare war on Rome as well. Scoop it up from under, under old NK's uh, nose. And then, um, yeah, this is, this is fantastic. All right, shithead, you've bothered me for the last time. I'm going to declare a surprise war on you. I'm sure it becomes a little less surprising each time I do it to someone, but it's it's lovely. It's it's, it's I, I enjoy it, and that's what matters. Your hubris will be your end. No power can defeat Rome. Don't you think that's kind of kind of ironic? Okay, so now we can see the Roman military in its its full force. This is this is fairly dangerous. I'm not going to lie. He has um, two units of warriors, which are almost as good as my ants. And he has the spearmen, which are very, very strong. They're very powerful. So this is not... This is not great. You know, simply put. Our expression of political philosophy will define humanity's future in the classical era. So we've just... Ex we've discovered political philosophy, which allows us to adopt one of these hierarchies. Autocracy is kind of useful. Classical Republic, kind of useful, but really we want an oligarchy. This gives us more unit experience. The people of Formicidae adopt a government of oligarchy, the great synthesis of their political philosophy. Yeah, we're, we're some great thinkers out here. So ant production is in full swing, but unfortunately we had a few turns off there, so there's just not that many, there's not that many ants en route. There's just a couple here. And the Romans have really formed up a nice tight front line here in the south. I should be able to pick off their slingers, which is nice. But generally, this isn't looking too great for us. You may be wondering how I'm able to field so many armies and still have a positive income. It's because ants... You know, the game had, had realized that ants and, well, scouts, really, they're not that good. Um, and so the, the, the game doesn't charge you any upkeep for these units. Uh, so I could, theoretically, I could have 100 ants. I could have 10,000 ants. Every tile on the map could be ants. Wouldn't cost me a dime. Yes, the Koreans are wearing them down. See, this is what history doesn't teach you. The, the Roman Empire, you know, destroyed by barbarians. Yes, but also North Koreans and a colony of insects, a hive mind, if you will. We're getting a really nice wrap around on the city of Rome here. I don't think he has any other settlements, so this will be this will be good. Okay, Rome. Rome is so done for here. <laughs> wow, this is so terrifyingly realistic. Kim Jong-un is trying to strike up a trade deal for, with me for oranges. For just basic food. He's trying to... Wow, okay. Um, sure. Good. 
Yeah, I bet it's good. <laughs> I bet it's really good for you guys. Okay, this is the last stand of Rome here. And there we go, we've toppled them. I mean, I, I, it's a little unfair because I've had some, some pretty, some pretty big help from uh, the Koreans. Didn't expect I was going to be saying that today, but it obviously has to be renamed to, uh, let's call it Mark Antony. That's kind of that works on two levels. I think as a colony of ants, we really have to discover currency. Let's go for that. It says that Trojan is still alive, which means that he must have he must have a city somewhere. Well, I don't know. Oh, I think he's up here. Yeah, based on this road, leads from Mark Antony to a purple settlement. So he must have a settlement up here. We're gonna dispatch a couple of ants to go deal with that. Look, my expectations for Pyongyang are pretty modest. I'm expecting half the city to be on fire by the time I get down there. So this is good. This is really good. And just on time, we can claim great uh, prophet Zoroaster. That is going to allow us to found our first religion. The first religion in the entire game, actually. Okay, so the religion is going to, we'll take that symbol and it's going to be insecticism. Insecticism. Not to be confused with incesticism, which is a very different set of beliefs. And we get to choose what uh, tenants we want. I'm gonna go ahead with religious community to make more money. And then I think I can also take holy order. Missionaries and apostles are 30% cheaper. Now the whole religion thing might seem unnecessary, but I'm just gonna say that there's a very high possibility that these dirty, dirty Koreans are going to have, you know, some walls and maybe even a fucking cannon by the time we make our way down to them and I don't like our chances of killing them under those circumstances but there's not that many civilizations on the map right now there's probably about a dozen and if I can get them all to follow my stupid insect religion mumbo jumbo then we can claim a religious victory so that's like a nice plan b for us to have do some scouting down here see what we're dealing with this poor guy literally just built a road to it built, he built a super highway all the way into his next city for me to come fuck it up. I don't feel bad. And would you look at that? We have entered a golden age. You're in a golden age during this game era. Each of your citizens exert more loyalty pressure in the city. This pressure also affects other cities within nine tiles. Our civilization is doing so good that they're actually making other civilizations jealous. Like people in North Korea are literally looking at my anthill... And they're like, oh, like with, with jealousy. Oh, I wish. I wish I could get in that colony. This is great. And I'm going to get one of these um, dedications. I'm going to take the Exodus of the Evangelists. It's going to help us with our religious uh, missions. Okay, so we found Ostia, which is uh, the Romans' second city and soon to be our sixth. I don't know. We're going to take it. That's what I'm getting at. Oh, oh, that's not good. The Romans have just made some heavy chariots. Now those are just as mobile as our scouts, but they're, um, I think they might be stronger. Yeah, oh yeah, I don't like the looks of that. Okay, 37 against 25. Let's get on the other side of the river, maybe help that out a bit. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and purchased a missionary, and uh, using this unit, we'll be able to start slowly spreading our insect religion across the world. Now you can see, Insecticism is founded here in Formicidae, and it's it's already exerting some passive pressure onto Antopolis, and that will convert to the entire city in 30 turns, similarly with Samarkand. And, oh, it's, it's even in uh, Amsterdam. Okay, that's great. So I'm going to take these missionaries and maybe pick something central, like Buenos Aires or Caguana, and then once I convert that, it'll put more pressure on all of these cities and... Uh, I want religious zealots that are just, you know, they're ready to detonate themselves on a moment's notice in uh, in the name of my religion. So we, we're really gonna, we're gonna have to start working on that. Oh man, these garrisoned heavy chariots are giving 10 combat strength to Ostia. It's really, really a challenging fight for me. I'm just gonna start wearing them down with ants. It's just the only, it's the only option. I'm going to, uh, like a lot of good ants are going to die in this battle, but uh, we have to take out the Romans. Because if they make it to the next age and they start producing uh, legionnaires, it's going to be bad for us. And North Korea is just spreading like a virus. I can see it over here. And it looks like they've got some cities down there as well. This is 
getting a little out of hand. I'm going to start courting Singapore. If I can get them on my side, that might be helpful. Okay, we've got some reinforcements making their way to Ostia. So once we get a good wrap around on this, we should be able to pick it down. Okay, doing a little exploring um, in North Korea, which is actually in the southern hemisphere of the map. Pyongyang, Wonsan, it looks like there could be a city here and there's definitely a city. Oh, my, they're just, they're all over the map. My little mercenary men, my little missionary men huddling away. Now they're going to spread some, the good word of insecticism to Kaguana. And they've been converted. Amazing. Many dispute the actual start of the classical era, but you know it was when Formicidae discovered currency. That's right, boys. We're on the map. We're basically doing all of the cool shit this game. Okay, we're slowly wearing Ostia down, but they're they're doing a number on us for sure. This is not great. And look, the Koreans are expanding again. Oh, they really don't want to be ripped apart limb from limb by gigantic ant mandibles. This is so bizarre. If the Koreans become too powerful, which it, it, they're like bordering on that right now, I may have to settle for containing them. Uh, if I just put them in a cage and then over time I'll, I'll keep them in this primitive state, you know? I'll, I'll stop them from advancing too much and then uh, I just force them into my religion and go for a religious victory? That, that might be the play here. Uh-oh. I'm seeing a Korean swordsman. That's really bad. Let's check the, uh, let's check the numbers on that. Swordsman, 35 melee strength. My ant, 25. This is going to be a long night. Okay, so the Romans have produced another heavy chariot and they put one in the field. Yeah, they're really fanning out on me here. But their city's getting pretty low. I just keep swarming them here. Oh, they're going to give it up any second now. They are, they're just about ready to crack. Okay, we've got them. The well-being of the fetus is to not hope for much more well-being. The fuck does that even mean? Rome will not stand the test of time. Okay. Well, that's great. Glad to hear it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep the city. Ostia becomes, yes, you guessed it, it is Ostiant. Okay, now the military is completely free for scouting purposes on North Korea. I, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some scouting, like truly, because if I can't kill them, going to war with them would be a massive mistake. I really, I really have to survey what their capabilities are here to get a good idea of it. So it looks like the Koreans have four cities. Hmm. I, I, th I think I can take them. It's going to be Pyongyang and Wonsan that will be the challenging part, but if I'm correct, I think that they're in a corner here, so I can probably build a great wall of ants and keep them out. Yeah, I think I can do this, but I'm really going to have to bring all of my tools to bear here. I'm going to have to get Singapore to help me out with Nampo, get a whole lot of ants on Hamhung, and then it's just going to be a bloodbath at Pyongyang. But like, when isn't it? So. I see your soldiers. Send them away before I teach them a lesson. My missiles are standing by. Okay, I think... I think you might be bluffing on this one. You haven't even figured out how a fucking uh, toaster oven works yet, my man. Although I wouldn't put it past the North Koreans to prioritize missile technology over toaster ovens. My troops are just passing by. The best part about this playstyle is that it doesn't matter how much of a piece of shit your city is, it can produce ants, and it can produce them pretty effectively. Because it's like, it's either going to take one, two, or three turns. And all of those are pretty good numbers. Okay, so I'm going to start by wrapping around Nampo. We'll take this city. We'll probably keep it. I mean, I could raise it. The nice thing about raising cities is then that's one less city that I have to convert to insecticism. I'll probably keep it. Just as a fuck you. And also because I want to name it Nantpo. But uh, after we take that, it's down to Ham Hung. And then I'm going to just have to really assess the situation and see what kind of resistance he's willing to put up against me. My, my ant hills have tourism, I've just realized. Okay, I have Nampo surrounded on all sides uh, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 800 ants prepared to descend on Nampo next turn. And that's going to kick off the war. Now, all of these units should be able to defend Osti Ant. Mark Antony is a little bit exposed, I won't lie, but... I've got some uh, reinforcements coming in through here, so this this should all be pretty well fine. Yeah, Kim knows what I'm up to here. 
He's getting ready with his spearmen. We're now entering the phase of the game where you gotta get really comfortable with just losing a couple units to get things done, which is why I'm not in naming any of my characters. I could. I could name this guy Antoine, but then it would just be really sad when he dies, so I've decided not to do that. Hey bud, thought you'd like a surprise war. You dotard, I will tame you with fire. <laughs> Editor, can you, can you pull up what is a dotard? Nampo, wide open, let's move on it. With only 25 combat strength, Nampo should be a, a layup for us. So we've got a full wrap around there. We may as well take the rest of our units and start looking toward Hamhung. Okay, and look at this. Within one turn, Nampo is already conquered. This is great. We are the swarm. We are innumerable. We are inevitable. We are ants. Oh, the highly coveted one-turn ant. Yes. Much better than this filthy fucking four-turn ant. Ugh. My ants are... They're pretty beat up, but I think I have to press on because I, I really want to strike while the iron is hot here. And the iron is certainly hot. Poor North Korea. They're really just... They're just trying to make any kind of civilization whatsoever. And then a swarm of murderous ants comes and attacks them. And not only that, but somehow the ants have gained political favor with actual human factions and they've like, rallied them against the Koreans. The Koreans must be like, guys, we, we're at least the same species. You don't have to do this, please. That Antussi is, is too good. It's too strong, my friends. I'm sorry. Okay, now this is, this is, where, the, this is where the issue might come down. Uh, North Korea has two units of spearmen ready to defend Ham Hung with their lives. Well, I have a thousand ants ready to die so that I can enact some stupid challenge and record it for my YouTube channel. Ants deploy! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's just a wall of ants surrounding them. <laughs> this is beautiful. I've also gone ahead and made an ant hill. Over here? Do I need it? No. Am I going to use it? Probably not. But I just thought it, you know, it's the completionist thing to do. Okay, the swordsmen are on the battlefield. We don't have to wage this spiritual war anymore. We can just... We can just do it the old-fashioned... Oh my Jesus. We've done it. We've unlocked the... <laughs> we've unlocked ambush. 20 combat strength in all situations for this ant right here is now... As, he's stronger than the swordsman. He's a, he's roughly as powerful as a knight or a field cannon. Dear God, the ant power scaling. <laughs> the ants are power scaling faster than the Koreans. This is fantastic. Although the the Koreans do have a couple more swordsmen, and it is concerning me. Okay, my forty four well, no my forty two combat strength ant is ready to do a number on Hamhung. We have to keep this guy alive at all costs. He's just too valuable. So I have 17 ants on the map right now with the capabilities to probably produce like four ants a turn if need be. Okay, I think we've got ham hung here, boys. Oh, we nailed it. This gigantic red fist is a little threatening and I think it means that the city's ready to have a revolt at any second, but I, I think we'll be fine. You know, it's really hard to work with you people when all you want to build is a ancient wall and it takes you 46 fucking turns. That's that's about like 3,000 years in game time. Okay, so now what we want to do, now that we have hand hung, is we want to stabilize this front and start fanning out and using our numbers to our advantage. We'll never be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with swordsmen or, you know... God knows what they're going to have next. Uh, pikemen, maybe? But we can infiltrate these sides, start pillaging, start destroying. Maybe I can destroy the iron resource. That might um, influence his supply lines in some way. And uh, really just, we're going to be bothering them a lot. See uh, see if we can do that while our, our main army heals up. Also, I've got some missionaries that I'm going to start sending into his territory. Okay, so Kim Jong-un seems to be fanning out in a, a wide defensive pattern here, trying to keep me from infesting Wonsan. I, I guess he doesn't realize he misspelled the uh, name of his own town. It should be Wonsant. Uh, and Pyongyang. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> Wherever the fucking A is, man. Just Ant. But uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in there and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill them and I'm going to starve them and... 
It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a good old time. Nant Poe now follows insecticism. Very good. Spread the good word here. I'm sure they'd love to hear about it. Okay, yeah, he's really retreating inward here. He's making pretty good use of archers, but again, he doesn't have any walls on his settlement, which is like, it's a pretty rookie mistake, I'm not gonna lie. Oh no, my missionary was destroyed by a North Korean archer. I guess that is how things go up there. At this point, I'm just gonna keep pumping the ants um, straight into his eyeballs until uh, they explode out of his head. Doing a little overview here, we can see my ant colonies are... They're really integrating into the world well. Like Singapore is trading with Ostiant, which is trading with Mark Antony, which is trading with Candy, Antopolis with Caguana. With it's really, it's going good. Things are going well. And my religion is uh, spreading, you know, quite nicely. And we've got our only threat contained to a small kind of like subcontinent here, uh, the Korean Peninsula, I guess you could call it. Okay, and I've got the, this powerhouse ant right here. I'm gonna bring him. Right there, he's gonna come in with 43 combat strength. And if I can take Pyongyang down, I think that the entire thing is just gonna fall on its face. I'm seeing the Korean military uh, undergo something of a, a de-evolution. There's a lot less swordsmen on the go and a lot more just simple warriors. I'm not sure if he's might not be able to afford the swordsmen or what's going on exactly. Oh my Jesus, barbarian battering rams at Amsterdam. This is bad. You see, this is what I was talking about earlier. You let these people live for long enough, they start thinking that they're, you know, a real civilization. They start trying to play the game and they show up with battering rams. I'm not pleased by this. Fortunately, ants are very cheap to buy, so I'll just buy some defensive ants. Formicidae Empire makes history. The ant hill was no accident, but the result of the unique genius of our people. Yeah, it took me like 3,200 years to figure out how to build an ant hill, but here we are. What of it? So I'm having to redirect some of my war funds to defend Amsterdam from the barbarians, but you know, I, I'm not too worried. They're attacking over a river and apart from the battering ram, they're mostly just, actually they have swordsmen. Okay, this is a little concerning, uh, but at least I'm not North Korean right now because this is, this is really concerning. Their entire landscape is just being decimated by uh, the hive mind of ants. You know, I'm destroying their roads, I'm destroying their farmlands, they're, you gotta imagine they're just starving to death at this point. And look at this, I'm about to unleash the the absolute unit that is a tier 3 ant on this poor warrior. <laughs> this is simply brutal. Oh man, the Koreans are just pouring out more warriors from the uh, the military district. But as long as the fighting is taking place on their territory, I'm able to be pillaging things and just generally ruining their day. So it's kind of working out for me, I think. Okay, see see Mark Antony here? This has walls. And it gives it this little blue bar here, the, um, the fortification. If any of my enemies had decided to build walls, they would be functionally invincible. I tested this once in a, a game just to see if this would be possible. And uh, yeah, the walls, they shut the ants down pretty hard. But it's not my fault that my enemies were too busy building, you know, the great bathhouse and the hanging gardens. Mark Antony is also beset by some barbarians. Barbarians are honestly just the strongest faction in the game right now. I'm a dickhead running around in 800 BC using scouts and um, barbarians have like battering rams. All right, let's start picking away at Pyongyang. Let's get an ant count. 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, there's 20 ants on the map in various positions flooding towards the Korean Empire. I mean, it's always kind of been a bad time to be a North Korean, but it's it's really, really now a very bad time to be a North Korean. If I just keep pushing here, I think we'll be able to take Pyongyang and then uh, and it'll be all over. Be all over for old Rocket Man. Formicidae Empire makes history. <laughs> of all of our military forces, the ant is the most famous. None yet has achieved so many victories in war. Amazing. <laughs> You gotta wonder in this moment, what is Pyongyang building? Like it's, it, it, there's fire and flames and smoke and dead bodies all around the city and they're building something and I'm willing to bet it's not walls. I'm willing to bet it's like another fucking granary or something. I'd be very disappointed right now if I was a citizen of this civilization. 
Also, taking a look at the religious map, we are we are crushing it right now. I think Antopolis is going to it's going to go ant any second now. Everything over here is ant based. We li literally the only holdout is the Korean uh, territories and um, Antopolis. If we wanted to, we could we could force this into a religious victory. All right, I think it's time we put the last nail in the coffin for old Rocket Man. Pyongyang is hanging on by a thread, and I've got a tier 4 ant that is just chomping at the bit to finish it off. He goes in, he gets one, he gets two. Crucifies three men with a stick. There it is. Though its face may change throughout the ages. Editor Photoshop ants on all these guys. Is written from the hand of the victim. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, there you have it. Humanity's greatest warriors have fallen to the insect menace. And not just that, but the only surviving humans are now worshipping my ants as literal gods. I want you to remember this the next time you see an ant on the street, because this is truly a cautionary tale for all of us. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Also, don't forget to try Raid Shadow Legends using my QR code or the link below to get this, 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 and this. Alright, see you later.